A cordial greeting. Today is Sunday, November 3, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia. At the time of recording this video, it is 7.15 a.m. local time in Cuba and Jamaica, where preparations should begin for the impact of the next tropical cyclone of the season. This system is associated with a low-pressure area in the southwestern Caribbean Sea, and has a high probability of becoming Tropical Storm Rafael. This low-pressure area could intensify into Tropical Storm or Hurricane Rafael as it moves over Jamaica in approximately 36 hours and over parts of central and western Cuba in around 48 hours. It is also of interest to the Cayman Islands. This low-pressure area was designated as Invest 97 yesterday, and it's very likely that within the next 24 hours a Tropical Storm Watch or warning will be issued for Jamaica. Additionally, a Hurricane Hunter aircraft will be investigating the area this afternoon to see if a tropical depression has already formed. As of the 7 a.m. tropical outlook, the National Hurricane Center maintains a 90% probability of cyclonic development. Thus, at any moment within the next 48 hours, we could see Tropical Depression or Tropical Storm Raphael. If the Hurricane Hunter aircraft finds that it is not yet a tropical depression, it is very likely to be designated as a potential tropical cyclone, allowing us to have the first forecast from the National Hurricane Center. In terms of the forecast for the path and intensity, we have a lot of consensus. First, it is projected to pass over Jamaica on Monday night or early Tuesday morning, possibly as a tropical storm, and then continue northwestward toward the Gulf of Mexico. Along its path, it will pass near or over the Cayman Islands and over several provinces in central and western Cuba. In particular, if you live in Pinar del Rio, Isla de la Juventud, Havana, Ciudad de la Habana, Matanzas, Cienfuegos, Villa Clara, or Sancti Spiritus, you should closely monitor the development of future tropical storm Rafael. Then, in about five to six days, Rafael is projected to reach the northeastern Gulf of Mexico, although there remains some uncertainty about whether it will move toward Florida or slightly further west toward Louisiana. Therefore, residents in northern Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana should also monitor the progress of this future tropical storm. In terms of intensity, the models agree that it will likely cross over Jamaica as a moderate tropical storm, and may strengthen as it approaches Cuba, potentially reaching as a strong tropical storm or Category 1 hurricane. Once it moves into the Gulf of Mexico, however, sea surface temperatures start to cool, and dry air could affect this future cyclone. As a result, models project that it will begin to weaken, and it's likely that by the time it reaches the southern or southeastern United States, it will be a weak or moderate tropical storm. Now let's look at the global model projections. Starting with the American model, notice that it shows a strong tropical storm or Category 1 hurricane moving over Jamaica on Monday night and affecting the island at least until midday Tuesday. Then, on Tuesday afternoon, it impacts parts of the Cayman Islands and southern and central Cuba, eventually moving into western Cuba on Tuesday night or early Wednesday morning. This model projects that it could reach western Cuba as a Category 1 hurricane, so it's important for residents in central and western areas to prepare for a Category 1 hurricane. By Wednesday afternoon and evening, it is expected to pass just southwest of Key West, close enough to bring some tropical storm effects. Then, between Thursday and Friday, it will start to weaken as it approaches the Florida Panhandle Mississippi, or Alabama. On the other hand, the American model also develops a low-pressure system and possibly a tropical storm just northeast of the Caribbean, moving toward the Bahamas. Although this area has not yet been highlighted by the National Hurricane Center, it's likely that in the coming days it will be marked as an area with development potential. Here at Hurricane Info, I will be monitoring this area to keep you informed about conditions in the northeastern Caribbean, the Turks and Caicos, and the southern Bahamas. Now let's review the European model projection. In general, it's quite similar to the American model, except with a slightly more southern trajectory and slower movement. In this case, the European model projects that it would pass over Jamaica as a tropical storm early Tuesday morning then affect the Cayman Islands as a weak tropical storm on Tuesday night, and eventually move over western Cuba, near or over Pinar del Rio, as a tropical storm on Wednesday afternoon. By Thursday and Friday, the European model moves this system into the Gulf of Mexico, but on a more westerly track, also weakening before reaching the U.S., perhaps between Louisiana and Texas. Additionally, shows a tropical depression developing north of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic, moving toward the southern Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos for the upcoming weekend. The German model has a similar projection, with a tropical storm affecting Jamaica on Monday night, then crossing over the Cayman Islands on Tuesday night, and eventually moving over Pinar del Rio in western Cuba by Wednesday afternoon. The difference here is that it shows future tropical storm Rafael weakening significantly as it crosses these areas. By Thursday and Friday, it weakens further as it moves over the Gulf of Mexico. Also, note that on Thursday night, 
it shows a strong low pressure system or possibly a tropical depression moving very close to the northern coast of Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. This consensus and trajectory can be seen in the ensemble members of the American model. All of them project that it would impact Jamaica as a tropical storm and then move over western Cuba as a strong tropical storm or possibly a Category 1 hurricane. However, uncertainty increases once it reaches the Gulf of Mexico. Some American model members show a more westerly track, which could take this system over Texas or Louisiana, while others show a path toward Louisiana, Mississippi, and Alabama, and others an easterly trajectory that also threatens parts of northern Florida. Therefore, we still don't know exactly which U.S. state might be affected by this future cyclone. Additionally, many members develop a tropical storm by midweek to the north of Puerto Rico, moving toward the southern Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands. In general, the European model ensemble agrees with this forecast. Although it shows a slightly more westerly track, in this case passing just south and southwest of Jamaica as a weak tropical storm, eventually moving near or over areas of Pinar del Rio as a moderate or strong tropical storm. Uncertainty is higher when it reaches Gulf waters. Some members show a path as far west as the Bay of Campeche, while others keep a more northerly track, approaching Florida, Louisiana, Mississippi, or Alabama. Also, some members develop a low pressure area over the northeastern Caribbean. So, we will be keeping an eye on this area for mid to late this week. Now, let's discuss the anticipated impacts on Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, and central and western Cuba. Starting with Jamaica, here you can see the projected rainfall accumulation between Tuesday and Wednesday. Rainfall totals could exceed 300 mm, affecting southern and eastern parts of the country. So there is a high risk of flooding, including in the capital, Kingston. Regarding wind, gusts between 90 to 100 km per hour are expected, which could affect the entire island of Jamaica. So, prepare for the impact of a strong tropical storm. Moving to the Cayman Islands, depending on the path, Rainfall totals of up to 200 mm could fall near or over West End. While currently, the heaviest rainfall should stay east of Georgetown, it's essential to remain alert in case the system takes a more southern track, as shown by the European model. When it passes through this area, it will likely be a moderate or strong tropical storm. The American model projects some wind gusts over 100 km per hour affecting parts of the Cayman Islands on Tuesday morning and afternoon. As it moves over Cuba, heavy rains are anticipated in the west with rainfall totals between 100 and 175 mm affecting cities such as Trinidad, Cayo Largo, Cienfuegos, Jagüe Grande, Cabezas, San Jose de las Lajas, Havana, Varadero, Cardenas, Artemisa, and even Los Palacios or Pinar del Rio. In terms of wind gusts, the American model projects that as it passes over western Cuba, it will be a strong tropical storm or Category 1 hurricane, with gusts exceeding 125 km per hour. Depending on the trajectory, it may pass near Key West in South Florida, where some rainfall accumulations between 2 to 4 inches are expected between Wednesday and Thursday, with tropical storm force wind gusts of 40 to 50 miles per hour. Well, that's all for the update on Invest 97 and future tropical storm Raphael. Stay tuned to Hurricane Info. If necessary, I'll update this forecast with a new video this afternoon or evening, so it's essential to check if you're subscribed to my channel. If not, please subscribe and click the bell to get notifications whenever I post new videos. Well, that's it for now. Have an excellent Sunday, everyone. Goodbye.